This episode is the second of our two-part series exploring concerns about the data that bookmakers collect on those of us who bet with them and what you need to know about this as a smart punter. Once again, I'm joined by experienced punter and betting tech expert Neil Shah to discuss some of the options available to you as a smart punter, including a look at virtual private networks and service, also known as VPNs and VPSs, as well as virtual machines and other tools and techniques to consider to protect your information. With trust in big bookmakers running at an all-time low and an increase in complaints about account closures, delayed withdrawals, and just general awful customer service, the more you know about how bookmakers operate, the better for you as a smart punter. If you missed it, you can download part one, which is episode 45 via the Smart Betting Club podcast feed available across all major podcast directories. But for now, sit back and enjoy this special episode and some of the tools and resources you might wish to consider as a winning punter. Let's also talk about virtual private networks, VPNs, Neil, because they've certainly entered in that, uh, you know, the general consciousness now, haven't they, VPNs that you see adverts on TV for them? And there's certain things to bear in mind if you are considering using a VPN. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, it's, it's one of those things in the betting world that I'm sure lots of people can uh, head along to. Once, once something becomes kind of mainstream and in the public domain, then perhaps, you know, the glory takes are over. So for a lot of, uh, you know, VPN companies, and then that might be the case. So um, it used to be quite an effective method of, again, kind of avoiding um, things being tracked by bookmakers. The, the problem with um, using VPNs for for, for betting, um, I mean, first of all, some major bookmakers block VPNs altogether. You just aren't able to access their site. Like Bet365, let's, well, let's name one. Everyone knows Bet365 doesn't work with a VPN. No, they are very difficult to, to use with, with a VPN. Not impossible. But again, very difficult with the majority of, of VPN services out there. And the other problem is even if you do get VPN to work with other websites, the IP address. So uh, for anyone, I'm sorry if I'm teaching anyone to suck eggs here, but basically the IP address, it's a, your kind of, um, I suppose, your digital postal address, you know, what, what gets shown to websites when you when you log in, um, you know, where you're logging in from. The VPN changes that. We didn't explain, did we? For anyone listening, what a VPN is, it changes your IP address. Yeah. Yeah, so so it will it will change that that IP address, but you also you know you have a public IP address, which is what um, again it, it may change, but depending on the quality of the of the VPN provider, you know th- these might be kind of intermittent. The, the VPN might accidentally cut off you know, while you're on the site, so your real details can be leaked at any point. Uh, and also the the IP addresses that you get. In general, from most VPN providers, unless you go for a quite expensive package, they'll be shared. So you know, bookmakers will be well aware of the range of IP addresses that will come from from different VPN providers, you know, and, and they'll they'll obviously keep a note of that. So you know you, what you want to be doing is, is again logging in from a unique IP address. So in, in many ways, phones are, are a great tool for this because bookmakers, if they were to ban all IP addresses you know, of, of um, phone data plans, um, you know, just no one would be able to, to log on. So they have to allow some latitude uh, and some flexibility around, around that kind of thing. Whereas with, with the VPNs, uh, again, it's, it's, a, it's a method that they can kind of catch you out with. And then, you know, you'll get these the dreaded emails with, you know, all the, uh, the requests for documents and your Firstborn child and your kidney and, and whatever <laughs> else they, they want. So, so that's one one method perhaps that worked effectively in the past. There's probably still um, you know benefits to to doing it. Like for example, if you're going abroad and you know and, and the betting websites are blocked in that country, again you know you can kind of bypass those restrictions. Sometimes you know you will have accounts blocked or suspended because of your VPN use, and if you go into a live chat, they'll ask you specifically why you're using a VPN. Um, you know, I always tend to say, oh, you know, I wanted to watch American Netflix or you know, something like that. And mm-hmm. that's kind of been accepted as a reason before. And so, you know, that's, that's always worth a try as well. Yeah, I had the same one bookmaking firm. I use VPNs extensively and uh, with one paid, so, but it's not the most expensive one. I did get one firm asking me why I was using a VPN. And again, I came back with that answer. But in general, obviously, 365 being the outlier, and there's another couple of firms I can think of, some smaller firms who don't seem to work with certain VPNs. Bookmakers don't seem to care. You know, <laughs> My impression is that as long as you've got a VPN on, they don't. it's not really in their interest to stop you from betting with them. Especially if you're losing money now, if you're winning money and you've got a withdrawal, <laughs> things get a little bit different, don't they? So, in terms of the 
VPN options then, I think most people have heard of, is it NordVPN, I think they're called, and then there's ExpressVPN, there's a few others, but I guess the more you pay or the more impressive the product or the maybe they don't have quite so many people on shared addresses, for example, the better solution. Do you have a few options for people to consider? Yeah, so so I suppose a more general thing rather than, let's say, naming, I don't want to be necessarily favoring one company or another. I don't, you know, I'm not an affiliate of any of them. But what you, you should be looking for is a, a residential IP. So a VPN, which is static, which means that the address just doesn't change. It's always the same. Um, yeah. And it's a residential IP. So essentially, the IP will appear as if it's coming from someone's house. You know, this is kind of the the best way of kind of keeping your account healthy. Um, and again, because uh, a bookmaker can see the, the IP address history. So if it's constantly changing every time you log in, that, that will raise suspicion. So so any provider that can offer that kind of service. So, so you know, when, when you do look into the different packages and the different options, um, you know, are, are they able to offer a, a residential static IP or they may call it a fixed IP. It's good to know. You know, again, is it seems to be working well for myself and for, for others that I know. And I'm sure no doubt in time, you know, there'll there'll be bookmakers perhaps catch, catching up on that sense. But at the same time, it is difficult for them to do so because um again if they're genuine residential IPs, again that's that's difficult to track. So um that that's something I'd certainly recommend looking at. You also want to be wary of the price being too good to be true. So often and, you know, you're kind of skimping on different services. It, you'll end up perhaps paying for a UK IP address, but actually you're logging in from Romania when you actually look, you know, delve further into it. And yeah. to me, for example, I had an account blocked for, for that reason. So um, it's always something to to be aware of. But yeah, as I said, crucial thing, look at residential static IPs or mobile proxies as well. These are quite expensive. So again, you know, you would need the bankroll um, and the volume to justify something like that. But if you do, then, then again, mobile proxies would also be a very good alternative. Okay, that's good to know. Yeah, so the residential one. Okay, I didn't know that. And probably we'll get to some more of these topics now and I'll lean on you further for some of this. But uh, VPS service, uh, another alternative to VPNs, do people use them? Do you want to explain what, what they are? And I think we've also got about proxifiers. I don't know whether they those two come under the same discussion topic, but just basically a couple more options available to people, it seems. Uh, yeah, so so virtual private servers, um, VPS. Essentially, you would you'd be logging into a device, logging into a computer somewhere in a big kind of data center. Picture is seen from you know from from the matrix, thousands of computers all kind of stacked up in a big uh, you know, data warehouse somewhere. So you would either be have sole use of that machine, or you share that you know, machine's resources, and you know the, these can also be a useful way. Perhaps instead of plugging the phone around and doing all your betting on there, you can actually use your home computer remote connect you know, into that VPS, um, you know, do all your betting on there. Uh, it's, it's quite popular as well, for example, for. Um, People using bots on, on the Betfair exchange yep. that need to be kind of running 24-7. So again, you know, kind of feeding data from that. And actually, with the price of electricity now, it could be actually a, an economical option for, again, you know, for, for using things like that or needing things to be on or actively. The problem with VPS is similar to the problem with VPN. There's a limited range of IP addresses. And again, you know, bookmakers who were weren't so wise than before are kind of you know becoming better and better at, at detecting them. But again, you know, so it's worth ha- having a look at and seeing if if there's something you could use and and try. So I personally wouldn't recommend, for example, opening accounts on on, on a VPS these days. But you know, it was certainly possible you could be kind of logging into those accounts in between and having a secure connection. On a computer with no none of your personal details on there, none of your logins or, or any other data that you know, the, the bookies might be kind of sifting through. Yeah, it's good to know. Yeah, so if you, uh, for example, were using one of these and it was a cheaper one, you could see, and obviously other people in the betting space are using them. A bookmaker could conceivably see hundreds of people logging in from the same IP address to their website, and suddenly they'd realise, okay, yes. yeah, there's obviously <laughs> somebody who knows. Again, it's kind of showcasing that you know more than the average. Punter and tech person, I suppose, the average person uh, in terms of computers and technology, um, and something to consider. And so the proxifiers, they're different, yeah. And that's the next level up, is that right? 
Uh, yeah, so, so there's also an app you can use called Proxifier, which um, it, you, you would need uh, the details of, of an IP address and, and a port number, basically a connection to feed into. But this is also quite a useful tool. So for example, if you did use it, and, and, and apologies, is this <laughs> sounds like gobbledygook boots, lots of people, lots of acronyms and VPS, VPN and all of this. If, for example, you do have a VPS server, a different machine to connect into, you can use, download the Proxifier app onto that machine plug in the details of an IP address you may have purchased or a proxy you may have purchased, and it will basically run that through on that machine. So that's one way of perhaps bypassing the the, the standard IP address that you'd, you'd have on a private server and, again, tricking the bookie into thinking that you're actually logging in from somewhere else. I see. Yep. Oh, so there's a couple of options there. And the final one is the virtual machines. Now I have read about this a little bit more. More and more people are using them. Talk me through what they are and how they work. Yeah, so virtual machines, are, um, they're, they're quite a useful tool and I, I, would, I would definitely recommend these as a, first of all, you know, as a, as a potentially free resource as well. So, you know, you don't have to necessarily pay. You can download, um, I think it's Oracle VMware, I think the, the software is called, that's the one that I use. And you, you can basically, you, you make another computer inside your computer. Yeah. So, so you can open it up on, on another window, install Windows or any other operating system on there and essentially use that for your betting. So you'd have to find a way again to to connect it, perhaps, you know, to, to a 4G dongle or, you know, another internet connection um, or use the Proxfire app, for example. But essentially, yeah, you'd, you'd, you would, um, wouldn't need to, to give all of the data away that you have in your own machine and it's quite a good method because essentially it behaves like a normal computer. So, you know, a bookmaker will find it very difficult to identify if you're logging in from a virtual machine or from a normal PC because essentially they're doing the same functions. Um, so it's definitely something to, to look at. The only drawbacks I would say perhaps is, is you'd need a machine that's got the resources to handle it and you know, it can you know, take up lots of memory and hard drive space. Um, so, you know, if you're doing lots of other things on your computer, you know, it may slow down if you have lots of virtual machines in operation. Yeah. So, so you'd need a sort of reasonably up to date computer to do it. If you've got an older computer or an older laptop, you might struggle with it, but you know, have, have a play around for sure. Okay. That's great. There's a few options there for people who wish to scale things up. I think it's what you talked before about just having a mobile phone. I think that's what a lot of people do. And when you circle back to the idea of making it appearing that you're just a regular better, well, a lot of people bet on their phones, don't they? They don't actually. It's actually something that can flag you a little bit more if you're on a laptop um, or on your desktop. And perhaps it's um, maybe as well, they can see you've been to Odds Check or another website like that. But again, if you're just on a, a laptop, you're more likely to be a shrewd better than, than if you're on a phone. So therefore, by betting through a phone, although it's, it's obviously a little trickier, you can't be quite as quick. You can't blog it on a spreadsheet quite as easily if you're using a phone. But it's one option. It's a pretty cheap option, isn't it? Just buy a phone of a data plan and, and off you go. And like you say, there's often no way of a bookmaker limiting or blocking data plans for, for a mobile phone device and a data plan there, is there? And that's sometimes just the easiest way to do it. I mean, you, you can even see with some of the bookmaker offers, the opening offers that for free bets, I think one, there's one bookie where I think it's £10, uh, a £10 free bet on the regular online site, but if you do it through the, their mobile site, then you get, you know, doubles, you get £20 for it. So, and then there's quite a few bookies who, who do that and have mobile specific offers. I think there's always a reason why they would market things like this. And, um, you know, clearly they, they see it as, again, more casual punters and more consumers will do that. Mobile betting, it, perhaps you could say is more impulsive. You've always got your mobile with you. Um, you know, they want, again, there's a shift with bookmakers to, to move lots of people to live betting and for that to have an increased market share because, you know, again, they feel that more sort of casual punters will be losing money on, on those kind of markets. So absolutely. And it very much relates to what we were saying before to try and make stuff look like the, the average uh, content. I'm not sure the percentage of people using phones compared to a desktop, but, you know, I would imagine it's, you know, it's predominantly would be phone-based uh, based betting for most people. Um, and with the, in regards to the data plans and the IPs, again, it's a very simple thing you can do because if you turn you know, your airplane mode on and off on your phone, then it, it totally completely changes your IP address. So you have a completely fresh IP address on your phone you know, without a huge amount of effort. Um, there's obviously still ways they can track you from your mobile device. And there's other things that you might need to reset and kind of tidy up on your phone, but it's a very effective way to be able to 
to get better sound to, to open accounts and you it makes you look more like an authentic customer that they want yeah uh, that's really a good point it's authentic customer they want and i would suggest as well down bet through the bookmaker app not through let's go to safari or the native browser on the phone to actually go and download the app and bet through that because again that goes to what the average guy is doing probably also suggest you might have some other ideas neil as well about the time of betting. So people betting on their phone might be watching a game on Sunday evening, a football game on Sunday afternoon or Saturday morning, or maybe there's a live event going on, like the horse racing, for example. Um, during the afternoon, people might be sat at home betting. So something to bear in mind at like those kind of times and just trying to hide in plain sight, you know, whereby uh, using a device, using the app and um, just make yourself look a regular person, even if you're not through the phone. And like say you can, I think most people have phones lying around as well, don't they? They can just, um, you know, old phones lying around that perhaps they don't use and they can you can reinstall everything if you need to. You can clean them. And you actually mentioned, Neil, there's some software that allows you to mimic your your screen, your phone onto your, your laptop or your computer. Yes. And I'm trying to remember what it Put is. Put you on the spot now. <laughs> uh, yes, right. Here it is. Yeah. It's called Visor, uh, V Y S O R. And yeah, essentially, you can kind of project your phone screen. I think you need to plug it into your computer, you know, with the USB cable. But yeah, we'll just kind of save you time if you've got a couple of phones and don't want to be faffing around with that. You'll be able to see it on your desktop or, or laptop screen and, and be able to control it. You know, with the keyboard. So again, searching for bets and kind of cycling through menus and things like that just become, you know, a lot easier and saves a lot of time. So yeah, absolutely would um, would recommend that. I, I think there's a free version, and even the paid version is not it's not extortionately expensive, uh, but it's definitely something productivity tool that's quite useful. Yeah, I like that. I'm going to check that one out myself. Actually, um, again, from the whole idea of pretending to be a bit of a mug, pretending to be an average get, uh, better, an average loser, um, the type of customer that bookmakers want. Because I think most people these days are aware of tactics of when you bet, so of what the bet type of bets you place. So you don't want to just log on and place that Kazakhstani second division R that you talked about. You want to sometimes bet in your accounts, or you wish to blend in the shrewd business that you're taking with some less shrewd business, or perhaps it's break-even business, or slightly negative EV, because you know that whatever you might lose a small amount of, you'll make back in the kind of the breadth of the account that it's, it's given in terms of the rope that they might allow you to take. Um they might profile your accounts. We all know about that, but perhaps there isn't quite as much information on some of the topics we've spoken about today. So, Neil, before we kind of wrap things up, is there anything we haven't discussed today that that we feel that would be beneficial to explain to people? Is there anything I've missed off? I suppose we've covered a fair amount, really. So, uh, But it's just, um, yeah, the, the central point really being how much you're willing to share, what you're comfortable with sharing with, with, with the bookmakers and you know how, how long you want to prolong your betting for. So, Really, all of this is kind of a, a balancing act. And we've said already, th- this information could be out of date in a year, you know, or some of the information could be out of date a year from now. And, and these things are constantly changing. So it's, it's really just thinking about the amount of effort required to do some of these things. You know, some people may have more time to do it than others. So perhaps something I haven't touched on is this kind of the time commitment. So, you know, something like making a, a virtual machine, like, you know, that, again, that's a time commitment. Yeah you know, kind of setting up your device in lots of different ways. These are all things that will take time from your day. So if you are very busy and it's just weighing up whether it's actually worth it for you, in the same way people will discuss priming accounts and, you know, again, priming your account with again, negative EV bets, um, unsuspicious bets, things like that. You know, how long do you want to spend doing that? Because you may go on a lo- winning run and after a few days you're restricted anyway. So it might be kind of not worth the effort. So yeah, it's, it's absolutely looking at this, but I would I would definitely recommend to to people to try and look at what's out there. A lot of this is kind of public domain knowledge. If, if you kind of look around in, in, in different better communities, I'd, I'd like to also say I want to give a big shout out to someone who is basically been my my guru with with all this. Uh, yeah, go ahead. And is um, you know brilliant with all this. Uh, a chap called uh, Brian Copland, very smart um, guy, extremely knowledgeable on on you know the security aspects of of bookmakers and, um, you know, very giving with his knowledge. Um, so I absolutely want to give a shout out to him if, if you wanted to get in touch with him or, you know, perhaps he can be of assistance to you. I think uh, I, I don't want to take credit for um, a lot of the things I've talked about today have been, you know, through him, through other people in the community that I've spoken to. So yeah, if, if you wanted to get in touch with, with Brian, if you're on Telegram, 
Um, you know, he's mentioned, you know, people, he's happy for people to get in touch with him. It's at Brian, B R I A N A Coplin, C O P L I N zero, number zero, Brian A Coplin zero, um, on Telegram. So yeah, do, do get in touch with him if you have other questions sort of related to this. And I'm sure he'd be happy to help you out. Oh, great. Well, there you go. Brian A Coplin zero on Telegram. I'll slide that into the show notes as well. I guess you've spoken to Brian about this. Um, hopefully, he doesn't have a uh, yeah. I did not lose. check again, and, there, and I'm sure there will probably be uh, some people slightly annoyed with some of the information I've shared, which is going to happen. But at the end of the day, you know, I don't think there's anything we've talked about that bookmakers aren't already aware of no. at some level. You know, in the same way, you know, there's lots of people in betting communities who will say, you know, oh, don't share that, don't give your edge away. And, keep it to yourself. And, and it's like, well, okay, the bookmakers probably know there's thousands of people who do it. They are resourced in such a way that, you know, they will choose to to ignore certain things or focus priorities on, on, on other things. So for example, you have to think, what's the proportion of people who are actually doing this? And um, I know you've got, have got a big audience, but you know, I don't think there's going to be, like, <laughs> be millions of people who are going to listen to us today and, and start doing this. So, you know, I, I think in, in that sense, you know, we're fine to, you know, to give this. And, and uh, I don't be one of those people who kind of, you know, just give away little nuggets and, and nothing of value. I hope there has been something of value today, but I hope also people can understand why perhaps there's some things that, I just kind of, kind of want to leave there in the open, but with enough digging and not, not a huge amount, you know, you can do this research online, look into all the things that we've talked about today and, you know, do a little bit of trial and error and testing on your side. And, you know, you'll definitely sort of reap the benefits of it. Yeah. Well, I think you touched quite a few good points there. One of them is about the reach and telling people this kind of information so people might not be happy. But the reality is, you know, we are a pebble in the, the pond or the, the ocean of people that bet in terms of who listen to this or join SBC. You know, let's say 98% of people lose. Maybe it's only going to be 97.99% now. <laughs> we, we've impacted a little bit, you know, a tiny proportion of people perhaps were able to help. And so, yeah, all this information is out there. And again, it, it's just about with betting and sometimes with tipsters. And uh, the more you put in, the more you'll get out, whether that be finding uh, better value bets, better, you know, opening more bookmaker accounts will be more... Uh, scrupulous in terms of how you keep records or just you know how you make the most of uh, the edges that are available to you. Uh, I feel like it's the similar concept here. There are no necessary shortcuts to success sometimes. Uh, I know people like to sell betting as a as you know, it's an easy way to make money. It, it certainly isn't. It is a way to make money, but again, you need to bear in mind all of these things to scale up your your betting and to make it make a consistent profit from it long term because you know bookmakers don't necessarily want to <laughs> engage or you know engage you as a customer if you're successful in shrewd. So we have to be be mindful of this. So yeah, Neil, um you're very appreciative of your time, your expertise. Obviously you've got the link there to Brian and people can go on to Google and go and research into the information. I think the key thing is that we can't trust bookmakers to behave correctly. We can't trust the regulator to enforce them to behave correctly. And then we can't trust, I suppose, the you know, government, or if it's the ICO, or those people who are supposed to protect our data and our information and that being abused from, from that taking place. And I think most people have that understanding these days that they have to protect themselves and they have to inform themselves, especially when it comes to things like betting and how you, you know, I saw somebody say, is winning betting is not hard, it's getting paid that's hard these days. <laughs> getting that withdrawal to hit your bank account. And that's modern betting, isn't it? So... Yeah, no, no, absolutely. It's, it's all about that. And, uh, and, uh, like you mentioned with the trust element, can we kind of trust all these, um, bodies to, you know, to behave in the right manner? You have to think that the, the entire business model of, of a bookmaker is to, to find profitable, uh, punters, to make a margin on, on these bets. And so it's that cross purposes to what the government is asking them to do for safer gambling and for, you know, protecting problem customers where, Problem customers are the golden goose. So, so they're, they're unable to, to do that. So with that in mind, it's, it's leading to more restrictions of winning customers and more and more sophisticated methods for removing those players from the pool, um, making sure you know, that, that profits are kept. So it's kind of becoming this vicious cycle because everything has become quite conflated. Things aren't necessarily being implemented properly. And I want to give some credit to, to bookmakers in terms of, you know, some are gen, there are people genuinely within bookmakers, you know, and again, I know that do care about responsible gambling, do care about safe gambling. You know, they are proud yeah. of, you know, 
company's achievements to try and improve this. But I also think they're unaware of how this data is being used in other ways and potentially manipulated. So yeah, it's a big problem. It's going to kind of, you know, it's going to be very, very topical and we're going to see what, what happens in the next few years. But the, yeah, the current situation definitely uh, needs improvement is, is an understatement. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and we've got a white paper that's going to be coming in the UK and uh, no doubt other, you know, other areas, other countries may implement different rules and checks um, in the future based maybe perhaps on what happens there in the UK with the more mature scene there. But although technology might change, we can see the direction of travel where it comes to the betting industry at the moment and how they're treating punters because like you say, the um, low-hanging fruit from the profits that they've been able to make previous to the increase in concern and uh, diligence about safer gambling and affordability that's gone you know they're not unable to just make lots and lots of money from from people losing um, far more than perhaps they were able to or should have ever been able to so there's a squeeze going on at the moment so it's important to inform yourself and hopefully through this we've given you some details some information and some touch points to actually go off and maybe do some further research and find out and educate yourself on what you can do to behave uh, in a way bet in a way that allows bookmakers to to take your business you know we don't expect bookmakers to afford us a living or to make us allow us to make a profit from so we do have to bob and weave and duck and dive and play the game a friend of mine says it's a game and we have to um, educate ourselves and understand what we have to do to continue to get on and get uh, get ahead and get paid so thank you ever so much neil again today for this you know you're giving so much of your time tell us a little bit you've got your own tipping group that's um firing up very soon fire out some links uh, to that and how people can find out more. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, so I, I have a, a betting group that's uh, it's been running on a free trial for the last five months, uh, and now we're going live just in time for the World Cup in Qatar, where, where I lived for seven years. And um, so, yeah, I'm very excited about that. So, if you're interested or wanted to find out some more information, uh, you, you, know, you can find me on on Twitter at my better life M Y B E T O R. L I F E. And yeah, I'll be kind of, you know, doing lots of kind of articles, previews for, for the World Cup, be on a few pods here and there. So um, yeah, if you find what I've said interesting today, you know, please give us a follow. Yeah, absolutely. I really recommend people give you a follow. You have some really good information you put out there, especially you've got a community group on Telegram as well. We've been proofing your bets. There's one that we're going to be reviewing because you've got a good record. And obviously, you know your stuff when it comes to betting. You know, you're on both sides of the fence. I like the way you kind of hedge in your bets, working in the industry, betting yourself, and you've got your tips to group. You know, you, you've got all of the uh, boxes ticked, Neil. So that's that's really good for you. Um, yeah, so thank you ever so much for your time today. I wish you all the best with the service and uh, no doubt we'll perhaps do a podcast in a year's time maybe about uh, whatever's new in the space and whatever's taken place uh, subsequent. So thank you ever so much, Neil. Look forward to it. My, my pleasure. But yeah, thank you very much for having me on.